Hey everybody, uh, let a few more people come in here. Um, I'm sure some people are probably busy or working. It's the time of day that we're um, the time of day that we're doing this. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak. I promise everybody that I would talk about exiting the system some um, with my brother Brian here. And uh, <laughs> so I'll wait for a few more people to come in before I get started. <clears throat> So tired, man. <laughs> See, shalom, shalom to you. Shalom. Hey, Amen. I wait for a few more to come in. I'm sure it's still notifying everybody. Uh, it's going to be a good message. It's not going to be very long, but uh, it's going to be a, a message that we definitely need to hear. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll find a few more. How's everybody doing? See who all is in here. Shalom to you, shalom to you, Casey, Thomas, uh, Lena, everybody that's coming in here. Some new faces I have never seen. Mary Bell, how are you, sis? I hope you are well, sis. Um, praying for all of you. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen some of you, Lorena. Um, Shabbat shalom to you. Hey, uh, I'm gonna get started here. I'll just go ahead. Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm gonna put this on YouTube later because I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, probably working. Some people are busy uh, doing other things too, um, kind of in the middle of the day. But um, what I wanted to say here, uh, Shabbat, uh, Shabbat Shalom to you. So anyways, it's, many people are asking how to exit the system. And I know it's not something that you're gonna, you're gonna find much online, but it's something that only God can still, even now I can, I can say what I'm about to say, but only God is going to be able to lead you to it. Um, it's going to be, it's all about the heart's conditions, where your heart is, where your mind is. Um, what are you set on? So before I get started, actually, I'm going to read that in a few, uh, uh, share something that a good brother has said as, in response because he had a similar question about exiting the system and his response he he understood it completely and it was spot on um but anyways i'm going to start off with first off is moses right before i get into it we have business we have religion we have uh um business business and economics we have the um education politics. and politics these are the very things that have ruled the system um, since the beginning and it's, a, it's a, coming into a, a one world system as we know it uh, no matter which side we choose no matter who's in leadership it's it's all it's all a plan okay so there's not one that they're gonna allow in the leadership that is not a plan um, for the global agenda now, whether you know it or not, it's here. It's here. And what I'm going to say is this. In the, we see with Moses. Moses was a, a son of Pharaoh. Right? A son of Pharaoh. But he would r rather not be called a son of Pharaoh. And his, his luxuries and riches. And the glory of and the power of being called Pharaoh's son. In fact, when he looked out, he seen the Israelites being abused. Being beat. And he accidentally killed a man. You see, in our hearts, we should be able to look out and see not only the churches, the politics, and the whole system as a whole, this, in, in how everybody's caught up in everything, the whole system, just like the gods of Egypt. There's many gods that people are worshiping. Today, we have the modern gods that, the same thing that kept people distracted. Entertainment was one. The, the music, the TV, the sports, the, the business, the religions, the the finances do have an increase, the blessings. These were the things people were chasing after as many other gods in those times. But we see Moses looked out and seen a, a fellow Israelite being beat. In the same way, do we see people not being shepherded and see them being beat as well and not finding the true grace and the love of God, being misled? That was the heart of Moses. But when, when he thought he was doing a good deed for the, the Israelites, he realized that, that other, the Israelites themselves, you murdered a man, you killed a man. It wasn't murder because he wasn't trying to purposely just 
kill somebody. He, he was in our defense out of somebody else. So our heart should be, because we love our brothers and sisters, is defending one another out of our love. I'm not necessarily saying to beat somebody, but what I'm saying is that everyone should have that protecting type spirit. So what happened? Every, he's seen both sides turning against him. So Moses went to the, 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 the wilderness, the desert. And what did Moses do? He spent time there for, thir- for 40 years. He didn't want to partake in the luxury and the pleasures. So but until God called him back out, he said, Moses, I have chosen you. you you're, and he heard the call to go back. Moses did not want to go back to Egypt. He did not want the luxuries or the pleasures. So when he went back, he went by the power of God, the will of God. He directed him to deliver the people out of Egypt. So after, he, after the people were delivered, after the people were delivered, we see that he went to the wilderness, right? He went to the wilderness. Before the people were even given the laws, what, were, what happened? They were going to enter the promised land within those first, after the two years. They seen the good fruits, but then the giants that were in the land, they could not overcome. The giants re- re- represent the giants in your life that are standing in the way of you producing good fruits. So right now, God is trying to remove things out of your life that is keeping you, hindering you from entering in the promised land and e- entering the good fruits. You see, so he said, you'll pro- I promise you will not enter my rest. So they went around in the desert for 40 years, right? 40 more years. Then they're given the laws and they're still rebellious. They mumbled and complained. They're wanting to go back to Egypt, the luxuries and the pleasures, and they'd rather serve other gods than the true living God. You see, Moses still had a heart to cry out for the people, to protect the people. He went up on the mountain and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights for the people because God was about to wipe them all out. But in God's grace... He said the descendants would enter the promised land. Now look at here. I'm going to show you something else. We see Jonah was another man that ran from from doing God's will. He was a man that ran, was eaten by a whale, and spit up on on the shores of Nineveh. We can sometimes run from doing the will of God and ignore it. And it's happened for every single one of us. Not one person alive has done something like that. Hasn't done something like that. I'm going to say that right now. But the thing is, when God is calling you to do something, we can't run from it. You back to it. You'll have not have peace. Just like Jonah didn't have peace in the belly of the whale until you obey. So I'm going to say this. After he warned the people... And warned in the streets, he was yelling in the streets of Nineveh, telling people to repent and what the judgment that was coming. He went and laid under one of the bushes. I seen the bushes in Israel. There's the little bushes and a worm, a caterpillar, just like in Revelation, ate it up, right? Ate it up and it dried up. And he cursed, the, he, he was mad. He was cursed the bush and he's mad at God. And as he's sitting there waiting for Nineveh to be judged. And we can say, well, what's wrong, what's wrong with that today, guys? There was no social media today. He didn't think the people were going to repent. He was mad at the sin of the world. He was so tired of the system. Everybody was in there partying and sinning and building and eating and buying and selling and drinking. These were the things, their, their hearts were in these things. So when Jonah was laying there, he was under a bush in the desert, a hot scorching sun. Then it dried up. He's like, no, Jonah, why are you mad? You see, he didn't, he, he was mad because he wanted the sin to cease. But God seen the hearts of the people and seen that they repented. Today, as a whole, we don't have that, guys. Look around. I seen a, a video pop up one time on my, recently, on my YouTube feed. A disgusting music video. I didn't even click on it, but I seen what it was about and who it was from. I was like, wow, just disgusting. And three days over a billion views. Our world has a little over 7 billion people in it. This is not good. This is not good. Come on. So again, we're going to move on. Elijah was a man. He walked alone with God. 
And he defeated 850 false prophets, even in the threats of Jezebel and Ahab. They were all, 850 false prophets were misled by Ahab and Jezebel. That's crazy. He defeated it by the power of God. You can see what, what he said. He made sure and give God glory in everything he did before doing anything. Are we doing that today instead of giving ourselves glory? Now pay attention to what else. After he defeated them, those false prophets were put to death. And what did he do? Immediately he prayed to God. He was on his knees giving birth seven times he prayed. Then the storms came. What did he do afterwards? He fled. He outran ran Ahab on, that was on his horse. And what did he do? He outran all the way. He went all the way to a cave. Elijah's cave where he said, I don't want to live no more. Basically, he doesn't want anything to do with this life. I'm the only one here. He thought he was the only one left. Some of you are going to have that feeling. I'm the only one left because if you're truly in God's grace and seeing his kingdom, you're sometimes going to feel like I'm alone. You will. In fact, in in Luke 17, he says where the people say, look, here he is. Here he is. Go here. Go there. He says, don't go. Where the revival is, where it seems like there's a revival, where the masses are gathering, don't go. I said that long ago. Because the masses were gathering around the false prophets and dancing around the false idols. Guys, I'm not yelling at everybody. I just want you to, to hear what is being said. But look what God said. I have reserved 7,000 that have not taken the need to bow. There was no social media, guys. And what you see on social media, the, the, most, the ones making the most noise are not the true word of God. Those getting the most likes and comments and followings are not following God. I will say this because what is popular is never true. It never is and never will be. One man against 850 false prophets, 7,000 had taken need of the bow when the millions were following false gods. I'm going to say this, those living in America or any country that is wealthy. If you don't have a desire to leave your country in your heart and in your mind, something's wrong. Every day, I don't like being where I'm at. Every day, I don't like being, I don't like, I do not like America. And anyone that says, well, I love it. If you like Europe and America, Australia, you know, South, you know, South Africa, I pity you. If your heart's still in it, I pity you. I feel sorry for you. Because you haven't yet to find the grace of God. Now, I'm going to say this. What did Yeshua do? We're going to move along to Yeshua. Yeshua came to do only the will of God, of the Father. His, his end goal was crucified. He had thousands gathering around him. The thousands gathered around him by the gifts he could give, the things he could give, the knowledge he gave, the, the fish and the loaves of bread, the healings and the miracles. They gathered around these things. And what happened? When it came to going to the cross, even his own disciples that walked with him were not standing there. There was only three people at the cross, two women and one man, one disciple. Everybody else scattered, even those that said, I will not scatter. Now that's a representation of what's going to come. Judas betrayed him with money and a kiss. And that kiss is even greater than those that just say, I love you today. You're going to be betrayed. You're going to be rejected, even to those close to you. In fact, the Bible says it. Yeshua says it as he says it in the prophets. I hope my phone does not overheat. Excuse me, guys. Let us, uh, I'm going to move over here to the shade, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, let me go. Yeah, let's go right here. Excuse me for a minute. Try to get this phone out of my, out of this direct sunlight. It's hot out here, guys. Forgive me. Okay, so, because this phone will literally shut down if, uh, so Yeshua constantly, hopefully it doesn't, if it does cut off, guys, I'll come right back on. Um, Yeah. Actually, what I will do so that I do not lose this live right here, I don't know. So I don't want this to overheat. Let me see if my phone's still saying it up here. Sorry, guys. 
so I don't want to leave somebody out. Um, okay, it should be good. We're going to try to go with here. Um, Yeshua often went alone, right? He went alone to the wilderness. He got alone with God and prayed. He went through the trials, the tribulations, and the temptations, and he overcame all by the power of God. His heart was on, 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 on God and not the temptations of the world. The devil came with power, wealth, prosperity, instant pleasure, escaping the, 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 the stress and the suffering. He came to him offering him the, the allurements and the desires and even the power of the world and the materialisms. These are the things that he was tempted with, but God overcame them all. So what I'm going to say is Yeshua was a man that was walking to do the will of God. Those that followed, followed, but he often got alone with God. He didn't care who was following. He kept praying for everybody, his disciples and those around. He prayed for these people, but he didn't make anybody follow him. He stands at the door and knocks, but it's your choice to open it up and allow him to come in. Now, at the end of the day, he, his goal was to go to the cross and be crucified. Is that our goal? Now go back to the, the, the days of Adam and Eve. What was the desire? What was the temptation? It was knowledge. The people are seeking knowledge of good of evil today. Anybody can fall prey to that. Knowledge, but it's not the knowledge of God's heart that leads you to grace and love of his truth and love for one another. Brotherly love and the, the hope of endurance that keeps you enduring until the end. That is not looking on the world. It's the peace. Lust of the eyes, desires of the flesh is what caused Adam and Eve to fall. It's the very thing that will cause us to fall now. It's the same temptation that Satan came to Yeshua and said, this will take this, take the bite of this apple so that you will not have salvation, save these people, the entire world. If he took that bite, he, every, none of us would have salvation right now. Today, Satan's coming in everything that you want, not with horns. It's everything that you desire in eyes, you want, everything that looks good to your eyes, anything that you can conjure up in your mind, anything that looks good to your heart. These are the things we're going after. So look, look at what John did. John was supposed to be a priest, but they deceived him and put somebody in the power that didn't belong there. He was going to be a high priest. John said, I will not be a high priest. He'd rather go eat locusts and honey in the wilderness and hear God. Then when God called him out in six months, he had such a power. People hated him. You think you're going to be loved? The true prophets are going to be loved? Never. They're wanting to kill him every single time. But every single time they had a love for those that, that were seeking, that were poor, that were meek, that were humble, that were desperate, that were seeking. That were, didn't have their eyes on the world. Because those that had their eyes on the world that said, I'm already righteous. I got the knowledge. I got the wisdom. I have everything I need. I love Jesus, but they're not true. Their heart's not in it. He didn't go to them. In fact, he cut straight to the hearts of the Pharisees and everyone that was not, that was keeping those oppressed from the true word of God. He went through the maim, the blind, the weak, the innocent, the poor, those that could not help themselves, those that could not sacrifice in the temple, those that could not have the embracing of a hug. Some for 10 years because they had leprosy. A man that was sitting there couldn't go, go into the pool every time water came through to the pool. Was it Shalom? I, I forgot the pool, the name of it specifically. Forgive me. I'm not great on knowledge, but he, he couldn't go to the pool. So what he asked if he could help him get to the pool. Nobody would help him. A blind man crippled. And he said, he, he said, you're healed. Do you believe? Guys, some people that have never word these, read these words, but just heard the word of God. That are looking to him, that are, that are humble, that are meek, that are desperate. They don't have their eyes on the world. A blind man can't have their eyes on the world because they can't see the world. Some that are blind, claim to see, are blind. 
And those that claim to have Jesus or Yeshua are still has never had them. And I'm going to tell you this. If you still love the world and anything in it, or you hate your brothers and sisters, you have never had the Spirit. You are not saved. The Word says it. You have never seen Him or known Him. You have not seen the truth or the grace of God. And I'm telling you, if you cannot do that, you are yet to die to yourself because you forgot your former condition. Now, Bashida, thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Now, um, John's head was chopped off in six months from speaking with the power of God. He came to do the will of Father of God. But look what he says. My joy is full. I must decrease and he must increase. None of us are that special, guys. And we're going to go down to Noah now. Noah was a man while everybody's mocking and scoffing. He continued to build the ark in a field away from the city. Where people were buying and selling, eating and drinking. Now I'm going to get into specifics what I'm talking about when I'm saying this. Planting and building. We see the same things going on today, giving into marriage. Their hearts and minds were set on these things and they mocked and scoffed at at Noah who was truly warning with the fire, warning of the judgment to come, warning of the things to come. They were turned away from Noah and only seven others made it along with Noah. That makes eight. So look what happened. These eight went on the the ark and God shut the ark where no man could open it. Same he says, at the end of the days, people come knocking. The door will be open, the wedding feast where no man can open. People will knock. But nobody will be able to enter because he shut the door that no man can open except God. And the same way, we know that Noah kept building the ark because he's seen, heard and obeyed what God said. Because he's seen grace in God, he obeyed. If you have obedience, you will obey and continue to build your ark, guys. If you truly seen the grace of God in his eyes, and not through the eyes of man. You'll have the peace and you'll continue to build your ark regardless of what anybody else says or does. Let them be in the world. Today we have a tower of Babylon being built and everybody's building their towers around it. Making a name for themselves. Abraham came out of, out of, out of uh, Mesopotamia where Babylon was. The, the, where the cities, the land where Babylon was. He left it. To dwell in tents, you got to have a tent mind. Your heart's got to be on a, a, a mind of, a heart of tents, temporary. No matter where you go in this life, this is not permanent. Your house that you buy is not permanent. Your car is not permanent. Your riches are not permanent. Your money is not permanent. These things should be passing away with the glory and the riches and all the, the attachment to it. It is not, can, God, can I keep these, guys, is your heart on it or is it not? Now keep paying attention. Here we go. There was 10 virgins. 10 were keeping the Holy, Holy Spirit of God and keeping their lamps filled. That's the Holy Spirit. And five others were not. They were still focused on the world. So when the time came, the, the, the wise virgins kept their lamps filled. You think these, these virgins said, I'm wise? No, they're humble. They just kept their lamps filled and sought God in the humility. The other ones were playing in the world. Business as usual. So what happened? They said, go buy from the merchants because if I share my own oil, there's not enough for both of us. Right now, I'm telling some of you, there's not enough oil for both of us. There's not enough oil for your pastor and you. Your pastor may not make it because the oil is not from God, but he's buying it from the merchants of man, the ways of man, the religion of man, the business of man, the prosperity of man. These things are, you can't get you there, guys. The merchants are the merchants of the world that had the artificial oil. That's not the oil of God. We're the true vine. He is the vine. The true fruit must be pressed, guys. The, the olive oil must be pressed from the tree. The tree must be shaken when they're ripe so the olives fall off. But if you're not, you got to be pressed then after you get shaken. It must be shaken. So when you get shaken, the oil truly comes out. And that's the oil that must go. You're going to continue to be shaken and continue to be pressed until that oil comes out. Now pay attention. This is from a good brother. A brother that gets it. He's a good brother. It, it, um, 
from Israel. And this is why I love the Jews are so important, guys, because they are to be the light to the nations. Unfortunately, many are getting the vaccines and doing other things and bowing down to the system. Why? Because they might not be able to work and make money. What do you think it's in? It's the heart, guys. Are you trusting in God or not? Is your eye still in the world or not? I'm telling you, the business, the politics, the religion, the education, it's all a system to combining as one. Now look what he says. Some verse that came into mind is this one. And I asked my brother if I could share this. He said, yes. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Are you finding that precious pearl or you want the whole, the field and the things in the world? Look what he says. That's Matthew 6, 21. Exiting the system doesn't mean not work, but why you're working. Where our heart is. People think they can study or knowledge to reach salvation instead of letting God work and know what Yeshua has done for us on the cross. We didn't do anything. (laughs) Our wisdom won't get us there anywhere. Look at this. It's okay to study, save up money, but not to put your focus on it and not to depend on it. But but trusting God. He said, no, I said, but not to put your focus on it and not to depend on it, but trusting God. He gets it. Some are going to read that and say, grace, shower upon me. This is, guys, there's much more than that. If you're truly made full in the fullness of God and the joy of God, your joy is going to fill you. You're not worried in fear. There's people starting to message, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're watching these videos online and they're freaking out. Guys, if you're really right with God, you're not going to live in fear. You're going to be at fear. Some people are ignoring and suppressing the fear because their mind is still in the world, watching the videos of the world, watching the things of the world. Their head is in Facebook rather than this book. Guys, he tells us the seeker in Luke 17. Watch yourselves as a brother sins rebuke him. Remember, And if he repents, forgive him. You better still forgive him in his heart, your heart. Seven times in one day, he sins against you. And seven times he comes to you and says, I repent. You are to forgive him. There's no excuse, guys. No excuse. Now look at here. Look what he says. The time is coming when you will long to see the days of the Son of the Man, but you will not see it. You should be seeing it right now. If your mind is still on business, religion, the YouTube videos, the politics, economics and business, you're seeking more and more education, you're not going to see it. The kingdom is within, it's right now. Whether you know it or not, eternity is not an option. It's right now. If you're still looking for the signs and wonders, you're already deceived. If you're still seeking more knowledge in order to gain some secret revelation, you're deceived. If you're still seeking a man and jumping from pastor to pastor, you're deceived. If you're still looking for YouTube video to YouTube video, don't send me a YouTube video. I'm not going to watch it, guys. I don't care. I don't tell, I have time. What I have time is to... Make sure I'm hearing from God and my heart's right and, everybody, and praying for other people. I have no time to watch a YouTube video. I don't care. This person has wisdom. I don't care. What I care about is loving my brothers. <laughs> Love this brother, man. <clears throat> we must be willing to die for one another. See everybody wanting to be a shepherd, but nobody knows what it means. You can't be a shepherd without caring for the sheep. When you, in fact, are a wolf yourself. Don't take, don't ever take my boldness, guys, as being arrogant. You know who you are in the night and in the dark, guys. Listen. If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be convinced even someone rises from the dead. (laughs) 
Look what he says. People will say, he's over here, look right here, see over here, don't run off, don't follow them. He says it. There's a revival going on right here. There's an awakening going on right here. Don't go. Those return 2020 people, don't go. And everyone involved in it, don't follow. I'm warning you right now, you have to, guys, these people are not dwelling in tents. They're making kingdoms for themselves and building their own tower of Babylon. You're going to have to build your own tent, guys. Meaning, your mind and heart has to be tently minded. It has to be arc minded. It has to be wilderness minded. It has to be like Yeshua when he went to, 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 to the garden alone to pray. It has to be garden minded. Do we truly want to be healed or do we just want the healer? Everybody wants to lead, but nobody wants to die or serve. But first, he must endure horrible suffering, be rejected by this generation. It's the same time of Yeshua, guys. Also, at the time of Son of Man, you're going to suffer the same way he says it as he did. You're not going to be better off. The church, the false churches will be better off and the synagogues. Also, at the time of the Son of Man, it will be just as it was at the time of Noah. People ate and drank and men and women married right up until the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was in the time of Lot, people ate and drank. Guys, what was with Lot? He says when God, he didn't want to leave. Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, get up. The angel said, get up. And he still laid there. He said, get up. And he was grabbed by his hand. Get up. It's going to be destroyed. He said, God told him to run up to the mountains. He said, but God, if I go up there, I can't survive. Some of you are saying that right now. If I depart from this, if I leave this, I can't survive. Guys, I'm not telling you what to do right now. But God's going to convict you in all things right now. You will know if your heart is on, on, on certain things in the world. I don't even have to say it anymore. You know if you have peace or if you don't. You know if you're hating your brothers and sisters or if you're not. You know if you're restless or if you're not. Some of you are putting on a mask to cover that up. When we seek things in this world to cover up what is truly needs to be resolved here and here, we run from it. Look what he says. People ate and drank, bought and sold, planted and built. But the day Lot left Saddam, fire and sulfur rained down and from heaven and destroyed them all. That is how it will be on the day of the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, if someone is on the roof with his belongings in the house, he must not go down and take them away. There is your heart. Guys, you're not going to see. He says it's not coming in signs and wonder. It's within. It's right now. Look at this. He does this right now. Is your heart right now on your belongings, on your house? Similarly, if someone is in the field, he must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife was missing. It might have been friends. It might have been family. It might have been something else. It might have been the, the luxury, the comfort, the familiarity with your surroundings and your environment, your house that you were living in. Whoever aims at preserving his own life will lose it. But whoever loses his life will stay alive. He's meaning eternity. I tell you, on that night, there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken, one left behind. There will be two women grinding the grain together. One will be taken, one left behind. That's where, Lord. He answered, wherever there's a dead body, that's where the vultures gather. And the one that is humble will be exalted. Many people are right now are just like this man who said he didn't commit any of these sins. He wasn't greedy dishonest, immoral, or like this tax collector, right? A man's, man, man comes, says, I've not committed these. But there's one thing, he still loved money. <laughs> Guys, instead of seeking knowledge, why don't we rest on this word? rest in his word. If 
you want the joy, joy, the peace, and the love of God, it's not going to be where the masses gather. If you want the joy, and the peace, and the love of God, you're going to have to exit the system and find what that means. Even though I express all these things, it's up to you to find it. There was much more. I, some may have thought I was going to see, share some secret revelation. The videos on YouTube are. The people around the world are. I have nothing secret. It's not secret that those that have the Spirit, it's already revealed. And those that are seeking the Spirit and the salvation of God, it's, He's going to reveal it too. There's nothing special about me as, or, or any of us. He does say to come out of her, my people. Amen. And if more and more people understand what that means, there's much more to that than what meets the eye. And there's much more than that than we can ever obtain in knowledge or anything else. It's only what you're going to find when staring at a tree or at rest. The tree knows rest and the grace of God more than humans. We have to work out our own, amen, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Hardly anybody gets it. But you have to always remember 7,000. There's still 7,000, right? There's more than 7,000 today. We see there's 144,000, right? And plus more. There's multitudes of nations. But as a whole, compared to the majority, it's they're not going to make it. We have to be ready, guys. We have to be humble. Is your heart and mind, where's your heart and mind? Test yourself. I'm not going to be like those people. I challenge you. I'm not. God never said, I challenge you. He says, all come to me who are heavy burdened, who are weary. I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. But you have to be willing to give up your burdens and the burdens of the world for him. He's not in the popular churches where the flashing lights are. I'm going to say this. He's not where the masses are gathering. He's not where the people are, are gathering where they have coffee and donuts all the time. And have parties and entertainment and sports. That's not a church. That's a synagogue of Satan. There is no salvation in the world, guys. There's no salvation in a church or a synagogue. You're going to have to find it. You think I found salvation in a synagogue or a church? No. It was on my hands and knees, desperately crying out. And that's the only way you're going to find it. It's not an emotional feeling, guys. It's a desperate soul cry, a heart tear. We have to be ready to exit the system, continue to. Build your ark now. Hit the wilderness now. Don't let, don't, don't let your mind be set on money. Don't let your mind and heart be set on gain. Don't let your heart and mind be, be set on climbing a career ladder. Don't let your heart and so mind be set on politicians or what they say. Don't be wor worried about looking out what the pastors are saying or, or the rabbis are saying. Who cares what's going on in Israel or what's going on around the world or what YouTube video is going, being shared or what's going on in the media or what this celebrity says or what this person says. Who cares about any of these, these things? There's people that don't have social media or anything that are doing more for the glory of God in the kingdom that have nothing. Now, they're not seeking the praise of man online. They're not seeking the praise of man anywhere. They're sitting and doing what God has told them to do. Even if it's five people, that's five people that God has told them to reach. And they're going to have more riches and glory of God than anyone else. These people are obeying and hearing. They're hearing what God has told them, the will of God. Your will may not be to travel the entire world, but maybe for one person. You have to figure out what that is. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing, what people are telling you to do. You got to know what God wants for you. And no matter what, the will of God is to obey his commandments and love one another and not love the world or the things in the world. That's the will of God no matter what. There's much more than what meets the eye when it comes to that. And it can't be done in the flesh except by the Spirit. That's why the, those that have the Spirit truly understand. But those that do not cannot understand the things of the Spirit because they're still carnal-minded and in the flesh. They can look holy. 
So did the Pharisees. They knew the word of God more than anybody. But their heart not, was not in it. They could recite verse for verse and every single thing in it. But they, their heart was not in it. Their mind was not in it. It was not exiting the system. So this is where we are. We have to make a choice. God, your kingdom and your glory, we're building his temple or building the world's tower in Babylon. Truly the joy and the peace and the love of God will come when we have exited the system. I think we're all learning what that means more and more. None of us have got it figured out or got it made. Be weary of those that say they got wisdom or, or they got knowledge. And they start to share the secret revelation. Guys, I'm not giving you anything secret. This is the, these are things already written. This is already written. God's only going to show each one of us that truly have their hearts and minds on the kingdom. Um, yeah. Man. Instead of um, fighting with each other. Why don't we spur each other to good deeds and encourage one another to keep enduring and running the race? Instead of getting mad because this person said this to you, why don't you look at your heart? We all have to. And instead of getting mad, if, if it's not really true, you're not going to get mad. You're going to say, just pray for your, your neighbor. You're just going to let things go. And you're going to be at peace. Even if you're alone. I'm going to tell you this, no matter what. Even if everyone around you departed. Do you have the peace of God? Even if those that, that loved you, expressed doting love. Even if you're walking alone. Are you going to have peace? Are you going to let those people that are creeping into the body and is trying to separate. Gonna, nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you have truly found his grace and these people that are trying to separate and divide have never seen the love of God or his grace. People are too easily offended. They are. And he says, don't, don't grumble and complain against one another so that you won't be judged. And what does that mean? Those people are creating factions and feuding just like in, in, in Paul's time. Guys, you keep doing this and God is not gonna, he's not gonna accept you. You will not enter the kingdom of God. I don't care what you've done in the past. It's who you are right now. Not what you did 10 years ago, one year ago. Many will say, Lord, Lord, then I prophesy, then I cast out demons, then I heal sick. He said, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Why? Because you departed from the laws of God, not knowing the laws. This is grace, his heart, his mercy, his justice, his compassion. You, in fact, shake your fist and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow God in my own image. God is not a, a, something that we can make in our own image. He's one way and he always will be. Men change, not God. Times and seasons change, not God. So, I just want to tell everybody, we have to exit the system. Stop looking at everything, guys. Worst law is hating your brother. It happens so often. That's it. Love your brother. <laughs> it's so easy to love. Die to self and you will love. Maybe we forgot what the, what the ultimate sacrifice is. While people are still mocking and scoffing, while people are still casting stones, while people are still gambling for his clothes, he's dying on a cross. Come on, guys, is that too so hard? People today would have called Paul a Pharisee. You're arrogant, you're prideful. What, because he told people, I wish they would castrate themselves altogether? 
who bewitched you because he cared for the people? Most people out there today are not seeking to gain you to, so that you follow God, but you win over, win them over for you. The same way that people are telling you to get circumcised. You got to obey every single, all of this in order to find salvation. Disregard all of that. Is your heart circumcised? But guys, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. There's only one way we're going to find salvation. You either die in the grave right now, I mean dead to yourself, or you're not going to find it. Look, I love my brother just like I love many others. We can't say we love one another, but not do it in deed and truth. I don't care where I have to go. It makes sense. Doesn't make sense who we're becoming. All, all, all I do know. I think all of us were lost. I know I was. But I'm seeing more and more. I'm here to tell any of you. I don't care who you are. But if I have offended you in any way that hurts you deeply, all I want to do is hug each one of you. I'm not here to purposely hurt you, but so that I may tear down so that you might find the grace of God so that he may build. I don't want to build. I don't want to build on my foundation. I'm trying to build on God's foundation. Everybody, I love I love you. One of you don't don't be upset by what this person did or what this person says. Let God fill your hearts with the peace, love, and joy that surpasses all understanding. There's no other way we're going to do it by our flesh. And Satan is sitting there waiting to sift us like wheat. He's trying to sift us and make us a child of the devil. We're we're we all oh, he overcome the world. It's, so we can overcome the world by his grace, his peace, by faith and faith alone. Faith comes from hearing, guys. He says that if we obey his commandments and I'll give you a helper, how can he give you a helper if your heart, heart is not set out to obey his laws? Why is he going to give you his laws and fill you with his spirit and help you to give you that power if we're not ready there? If we're not ready to exit the system and die to ourselves, it's not enough to know Torah, but not to die to ourselves. We cannot see the grace of God or the truth. If we're not ready to die ourselves and love our brothers and our sisters. Guys, I'm not telling you to love homosexuality. I'm not telling you to love uh, different religions and Hinduism, Buddhism, and Judaism, and false Christianity, and false messianic. I'm telling you to obey God. You'll know them by your fruits. Guys, ready to sacrifice, ready to die, ready to love. They're looking to care for one another and bring people one and point people to God. Not to follow each other and create factions and feuding and divisions. They want you to follow God in His grace and His grace alone. Guys, I'm not here preaching if I'm not walking it. I'm not telling you to go out and reach people if I wasn't doing it. I'm not telling you to sit at peace if I wasn't there. I'm still figuring things out more and more, guys. But I'm trying to lead by example because God is causing it. I love each one of you guys, no matter what. We got to be ready to lose all pride of life, all this what praise a man we got to lose all right now who cares if we go to prison by preaching the word of god who cares if we go to death for preaching the word of god who cares who's against you whether your family or anybody else you pray for them you got to be like stephen god forgive them for they don't know what to do be like you should forgive them for they don't know what they do paul went to prison nobody's ready to go to prison i can't say nobody but majority these preachers in the, with their suit and ties and living luxurious are not ready to go to prison. They're not ready to lose all. They're not ready to die for all. They're not going to die for anybody in those stands. I can't judge for each one of their hearts, but majority. 
Guys, until we're like those people in El Salvador that sit under a bridge in 100 degree weathers in high humidity, sweaty, listening to the, the word of God on a, a man on a loudspeaker. These people are just sitting in chairs. We're not going to find it. I have never been to a church in America except one where, where some people can sit there, but I'm going to tell you, there's only one in America. All the rest I've ever been into in America, everybody's sitting, wrestling, it's rustling in their seats. They can't sit there. 30 minutes we go by, they're ready to leave. Guys, this is not the grace of God. This is not seeking him. I go to South Central, Central America. These people are sitting there in their seats. speak for hours are going to listen if you become more have more knowledge if you have more wisdom than the people that have led you to the grace of God and you hate one another you're losing the race I love each one of you. That's where I'm going to leave it. Just remember, he says, if you obey my commandments in John 14, 15 through 17, then I'll send you a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. You can't receive the Holy Spirit until you're ready to obey. It's not enough to just say, I'll obey your commandments and keep all the holy days. And it's, Keep track of how you're obeying. You lost it. You lost the grace. It's a heart issue, guys. Guys, I'm going to tell you something bad is going to happen. When? I don't know. Even if I didn't know, I, I, I don't. I'm not going to. I don't need to say anymore. God's going to lead people who are truly shut in with God. But what I do know, just go where God is telling you. Do what he says. I love each one of you. Don't be divided. And uh, be pleasing to God. Keep your mind in a tent mind. Tently minded. Tently minded. Temporary. Guys, I'm not here to tell you there's a pre-trib rapture. You're going to go through the tribulation. That's the whole entire world. We're going to go through it. We're not better off than Yeshua or the disciples. If, he, if, we, if we were going to go through a tribulation, we're going to have to apologize. Right now is a tribulation. It's a t trial to make sure that we can come out of this world. If you, Guys, I'm going to upload this video, so please go back. I'm giving you some signs, and, and I want you to go read these people. Slow down. There's no rush. Take all the time you need. Yes, pray for your enemies. Amen. He wants to complete our hearts. Amen. Look, I love you guys. Um, I'm going to get off now. Um, just keep us in prayers. Um, just, I, if I want to ask one request, I just want to ask everybody, just pray that I'm exactly where he wants me. I don't want nothing else, guys, except the will of God. For all of us, pray for him, or Brian, too. Um, I think we both lost our minds <laughs> remember Abraham left the, the, his big home right because his heart was not in it to dwell in tits because he's seen the promise of God I'm going to leave it at this that the sins would be as numerous as the sands of the seashore and the stars of the sky. That's what our hearts should be on. The descendants of God, not the descendants of the world. So be tently minded. He brought his family with him. So I'm not telling you to abandon your entire family and not take care of them. What I'm trying to tell you is do what God is do, will is. Seek it. And if it's God's will, he'll provide a way for not only your family, but for all of you. So that, the, that is, he may be completed in this life and reach those souls that are desperately crying out. And remember this, your prayers may be heard in the kingdom. They will be.
to of a righteous man or woman that obeys God, says their hearts are set on his ways. Delight in his mitzvot and delights in his commandments. It has to be delight, not a burden. A delight. You don't know, ask the question, which laws, which rulings? How do I do this? How do I do that? Just submit. God will show you. Die to self, yield to his ways, he will show you. Some people are praying, guys. Right now. It could be years, it could be years, and God could be leading you to answer that calling because your heart is set to answer that call. It may not be what you like. You may want to hear, oh, I'd rather go to Hawaii, but he may tell you to go to the jungles of Africa or India. He may tell you to go to the place where you don't want to go. It could be South America, Central America. It could be Middle East. It could be Europe. It could be Russia. No matter where it is, you just listen. There's nothing in this life worth living for, guys, except the glory and kingdom of God. It's coming. And what we just got to ask, what are we doing? I love you all, but we have to have our hearts set on eternity. Ask God to stamp it on our eyeballs so that we may see him forever and ever. We want to know more of his grace and more of his mercy, more of his justice, and more of his peace. And that's all. There's no other way. There's no other way. I love you all. Um, amen. Got to be at peace with what you're doing. I love you guys. God's going to lead you. Keep praying. May God is peace and shalom be with each one of you. And I, I pray that he will continue to bless each one of you with favor and his peace. And his face will continually shine upon each one of you. I love you guys. Love you. Shalom, shalom everybody. <laughs>